So here we are, Dan. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Finally got a chance to do this not so uh, life shattering event that we've yeah. been planning to do. So yeah, should be uh, should be kind of interesting. This uh, this idea, I think we kicked around uh, a few names at the outset something to the effect of trader to trader or trader talk. You know, I, I originally had the idea that because DTG has grown to have such a diverse membership that uh, I thought that it would be really interesting to have these sort of loose conversations, you know, with members so that people could see the contrast in, Everything you know, the the markets that they trade, their strategy choices, uh, risk modeling choices, even you know more macro views and how how they see themselves as a trader, whatever, just kind of loose conversations, so that hopefully interested parties could get a sense that this head of a pin hyper focus on specifics, you know, where, where do I enter the market? What metrics do I use? Uh, you know, let me find the, the greatest of that ilk uh, so that I can uh, make myself a profitable trader. Hopefully, you know, we would show the opposite that, you, you know, as long as you have a, uh, a foundation that's rooted in, in the stuff that really matters that people who actually are, are pro traders that are successful know to be true uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt that that would be kind of neat, you know, to, to, to have a good uh, cross section of these sort of talks build up. Uh, and, you know, our, our membership likes this stuff historically. So, you know, over the years we've, we've done things like this um, and they've seemed to be pretty well um, received. So I think what's particularly interesting to me about this first installment or, or whatever you want to call it in, in this new series is that I chose you <laughs> to, yeah. be the, to be the first one. <laughs> and, uh, and, and there, that's, it's interesting on, on a couple levels. First of all, it's interesting because uh, as you know, and, and, and obviously as, as, as the discovery trading group membership knows very well, DTG is, is as a community is predominantly made up of what I would call hardcore market structure, price action, and order flow traders. Yes, um, you know, not using sort of traditional chart metrics and things like that. Much more based on on, on volume and price specifically. You know, the auctions in the markets that they trade, and they're also. Uh, predominantly uh, very short-term traders. I mean, probably not even accurate to, to say they're day traders, you know, generally much shorter periodicities from that all the way from guys like myself who are pure market makers, tick scalpers, liquidity providers, whatever you want to call it, to what we call, you know, intraday swing traders is yeah, our I, terminology. I think- I think you had referred to NJ one time I heard it and I laughed and it, and it, it took me being in DTG for a while and discovery trading group for a while to see what you meant. But NJ being considered, you know, a long-term trader cause he goes for, you know, a couple of points. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, yeah. More, a little more than that, but yeah, he might be in trades for hours at a time. You know, to me, that's just uh, <laughs> it's a <eternal> forever <laughs> death sentence. Yeah. So, uh, but, but suffice it to say that, 
DTG traders probably to more of the people that you interact with would seem pretty short term. Oh, absolutely. Um, so there's that. So there's the sort of the raw periodicity component of it. And also the fact that you are definitely not an order flow trader. No, no. As a matter uh, of fact, I remember the first conversations we had, it was just you describing order flow trading to me. Yeah, it was very foreign to you. I remember when we first, yeah, you, before you, you really had what? an idea, before you really looked under the hood and had an idea. Exactly. What I did in my, my trading. Yeah, you were, you were sort of, <laughs> huh? What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And you, was, you were, you were I, how would you describe your, I would call you a, a classic uh, multi day to week swing trader. Uh, yeah. Yeah, regardless of the process, that you know, if you just boiled it down to periodicities that I look at, that would that would be the the time frame. And of course, you're you're a classic valuation investor too. You have a longer term. Uh, oh yeah, valuation assets too. Yeah, so so it's pretty pretty big contrast, but between just you as a trader and me as a trader in terms of, you know, obviously I'm involved in 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 a lot of other. Uh, things strategically in the market other than just you know, market making or extremely short term uh, intraday trading, of course. But you know, obviously what we're talking about here is the synergy of uh, our community and the, and the traders that are in the community and what you've got going on. So I think, I think probably a good place to start is to kind of go sort of rewind a little bit, go back to the beginning, because a lot of people, maybe even some newer members of our community and, and certainly the members of yours may not really know the history of DTG and how, how it came to be. Mm. And I think it's, it's really important to uh, how it's evolved and, and why it's sort of possible that we find a synergy between all of these different types of traders, despite the fact that we do have this, you know, the beating heart of, 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 uh, order flow, the trading in our, in our DNA. So I guess that said, I'll, I'll sort of rewind back to the beginning. It's, it's really a, a pretty simple and short story. Uh, one of our, uh, software vendors is a guy named, uh, uh Trevor Harnett, who owns a company called Market Delta. And in our uh, short-term discretionary trading, you know, we had had a lot of our own tools that we developed, and we, we just really liked the all-in-one nature of uh, his product, which is called uh, the footprint chart. And it essentially breaks down the prints in the mark, sort of a giant history of the tape by sort of neatly categorizing volume at price. And I realized that that may be pretty foreign to, to some people, but we, we, we were just really in love with, with his software tools and he uh, knew how we were using them as discretionary traders. And I think, you know, earlier on in the development of, of his company, he had a lot of uh, content that showed the vast capabilities of the software. Uh, you know, obviously it's, it's, integrated with other tool, you know, other charting tools and things like that. But there's really a million things that, that you can do with it to organize the data in different ways that you want to see it. And, you know, I think, you know, at least from my recollection, recollection, he had a lot of, um, a lot of videos, content and things like that, showing people here's every cool thing you could do with the software. But uh, a lot of people were just kind of overwhelmed and didn't, didn't really have, there wasn't, really anything out there that was a practical application you know how, how might you take all these crazy numbers on the screen and sort of distill it down into some simple little you know and i hate the word setup notoriously yeah I just yeah really you have do. a problem with that because it it uh, it denotes things that are very negative to me in terms of that, that retail traders mindset. What's the setup? What's, where do I enter? That Green light, red light. Right, right. So, but however, you know, you do have to have a way to, to, uh, as we call it, segment the market into trade events 
in some way, couple it with a risk model, you know, have an idea how often you're going to trade, what size you're going to trade, how, how are you going to categorize the information to, to make your trading decisions both in and out. So like, I get it, but, but anyway, so I, you know, I, 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 I think that what Trevor was after was that was to, you know, take the, you know, a, a concept and distill it down and make, you know, turn it into a setup type of thing. So we actually did a, a three webinar series uh, for him back in 2010 that I, I think the first one was just all the stuff that matters and the stuff that doesn't, you know, the stuff nobody yeah. wanted to hear a little controversial. And then the second was, you know, identifying uh, market structure and, you know, good places to trade and why uh, in the context of who the participants are and, you know, why everybody tends to, to, uh, to, to trade there and how they feel when they're right and how they feel when they're wrong and all that sort of stuff. And, and then the third webinar was, and I, you know, the first two were well received, but the third one was the, the blitz because, you know, at that time, order flow trading as a catchphrase had yet to become the darling child that it has ex exploded into. And it's still exploding. Uh, it's still exploding in recent years. It's, you know, now a lot of these, these uh, ideas and terminology and things have become pretty commonplace. It's just every corner you turn around, you hear people talking about the same type of stuff. But six years ago, it, it, it just wasn't around. I, I mean, I'm sure it was, but it, you know, somewhere I didn't see it, but yeah, it, I never saw you it. Know, somewhere it was, I'm sure. And I've but, seen a lot. I've yeah, seen a lot. But now it's just crazy, you know? So, but at that time that, that webinar was, um, it just exploded and we got a tremendous amount of feedback. We weren't uh, sharing anything with retail traders at that time. We, we, we were just, you know, doing our own business, uh, you know, and Trevor had just asked you, Hey, you know, why don't, why don't you throw something up? And yeah, and we did it. We, uh, you know, we had, we had a private like space that we on the web that we used ourselves and, uh, you know, within our own, our own crew. And, and I'll get to more of that later about the, you know, the think tank environment, sharing ideas and, and, and why we've always felt it was important. But so that's, that's kind of it. So we just got like bombarded by, um, people asking us questions and, you know, how do I, how do I read this and how do I do that? And all all this kind of thing. And we, it was pretty unexpected at the time. And we thought that probably the easiest way for us to, to field all of that uh, traffic that we were getting was to open up a kind of back room in our blog space that we had to a limited number of people and just let them interact with us. Again, with the with the totally uh, unexpected result, we we were unaware what was going to ultimately happen as a result of doing it, but we did, and we found that it, just just the act of repeating things over and over again that we ordinarily might talk more rarely about ourselves, or being asked a question, or being asked to clarify something, or whatever it was kind of had this unexpected effect of keeping us really sharp with our own intraday trading and, uh, or I should say discretionary trading. I mean, periodicity is not really important, but, and what I mean by that is I think it's, you know, anybody who's done this for any length of time knows that uh, it's pretty easy to become complacent. If, yeah. if you've been around a long time and you're a successful trader, by definition, it means that you're a grinder. Yeah. Grinding, by definition, you know, it's a lullaby. I mean, you know, yeah. it could it could put you into a stupor, you know, because of just the manifestation of of it all. And I think probably the 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 biggest thing of all was that, uh, you know, and we've talked about this before. You know, I call it the age of the internet trader. I mean, it's certainly, you know, we've, we've had the internet for, for much longer than this, but certainly in the last 10 years or so, I always say sort of post Reagan MS, there has just been an explosion of, you know, the 
sort of children of the software. Uh, I don't really know how to articulate it. Well, any, uh, you know, uh, the internet the tools, have, the tools have be, the tools have become so good that the yeah. tools themselves have attracted a whole new group of, and, of and it has happened for a long enough time period that they don't remember it any other way. Right. Well, because they have no experience, yeah. you know, they're not like going you say, back. They're like children that have grown up in that entire environment. Yeah. They landed on the internet and, you know, searched whatever they searched to, get involved in trading and, and S and P futures system, you know, or whatever, yeah. not only did they find a bunch of hacks, charlatans trying to sell them horrible stuff that doesn't work everywhere, but they also in conjunction with that found this vast, uh, sea of tools, uh, that's <laughs> a lot of pretty lights and frat flashing colors and, Certainly yeah. a lot of them are from professional backgrounds. You know, we've talked about that accountants and engineers and sort Lawyer, of more, yeah. more, yeah. And more systematically inclined because that's also the, the talk of everything. Now, again, post Reagan MS, the rise of HFT, everybody thinks that anything worth doing in the market's worth doing algorithmically. And it, it's, it's all about systems and understanding and sort of the, you know, discretionary trading is dead crowd and all that, which nothing could be further than from the truth. But, but so, uh, that's, that's who it was that, that, uh, we found was interacting with us and us being old school. It was like, wow. Uh, we, we were, we, we found ourselves trying to articulate what was pretty kind of ingrained in us but was like what what are, what are you talking about with some of these newer people because wait are, are you know are, are you really saying that where i enter the market doesn't matter as much like hardly at all compared to these other? yeah i'm really saying that and uh, anyway i don't want to i don't want to wander too far off the reservation but the point being that this sort of had the opposite effect of, of what we thought it was going to have what we thought was really going to probably be a bit of a chore but we kind of opened the can of worms so we thought it was only fair that we clear it out we really fell in love with the idea that it sort of blossomed into a great little community of very like-minded individuals who were really seeking the truth not a version of the truth that spoke well to their bitter ego or to their what they were uh, already doing yeah, or or worse, that that they uh, that was paying lip service to the what they wanted trading to be, yeah. rather than what it really is, and we just found that it was mutually beneficial to everybody uh, on a uh, incredible scale. And to this day, I mean, we we uh, our 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 membership uh, really gets a lot out of, uh, the community and it's very hard to articulate exactly what that is or to quantify it. But, uh, the process of sharing your ideas and getting honest, uh, feedback on very detailed stuff, um, you know, on, 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 on how to correctly organize the information and, and how to build a risk model and how to appropriately evaluate, you know, whether you're curve fitting or whether you're method hunting or whether you're, you know, uh, and, and having that constant feedback is, is something that we do in our professional life naturally. I mean, our, you know, it's the foundation of our quant firm is, is a think tank environment. Um, which which but, new traders need to hear. I mean, they, yeah. they, they seem to get this idea in their head that we, you know, once you get to this point where you're trading money professionally, you do everything correct all the time because of the aforementioned internet trader that you mentioned earlier, you know, I've got the perfect system, which is like yeah, right. System. Yeah, that's yeah, so sure. far from the truth. That is so yeah, far from is. reality. Yeah, it is. And so I think you know, like one part of it is is uh, people like to be in good company, uh, and and again, that's the other kind of unexpected thing that we hadn't really thought about when we we sort of lift the curtain, so to speak, as I call it, and that's that, but that the changes in how the technology was changing and the markets were changing and how that was driving newer traders perceptions was going to make it even more valuable to have this environment. So what we thought was originally just going to be a chore. Uh, and then we, 
we would ask, people would ask us, what is it? What, what's DTG define it? And we had the, we had the hardest time because yeah. you know, we, we didn't try to make it into anything. And eventually we realized that it was kind of a giant circular mentorship place For everyone. It, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And we had a, one of our original members who, you know, was around since the beginning said he, he once called it an elite dojo. I don't know if I like the word elite so much, uh, but I understand the context in which he was using the word. And really what he was trying to say was that there was nothing else like it. And to this day, uh, I think that's absolutely true. I've never, I've never encountered anything no, I've quite like what we do. Like yeah. and, and again, I want to stress that it has nothing to do with the fact that the vast majority of our membership happened to be hardcore order flow traders. Uh, that, that, uh, item has nothing to do with what I'm saying when I'm saying that it's unique. And it is not unique. It is not unique. Like as a trading education site, because it's not, like you said, it's this circular dojo. That goes right. around. Definitely not, definitely not a trading education site at all. We do have a library of materials. I mean, at this point, uh, we're, you know, more than six years. I think there's close to 20,000, uh, posts in the forum, you know, dozens of private webinars and, and, uh, you know, events that we do with members in our live room and all this. It's just, it's just a sea of stuff. And as you know, and yeah. it's just built up over the years and it's kind of like a library of resources on the one hand, but on the other hand, you know, the, the, the nuts and bolts of it is the, the day to day, examples and the journaling and, and of course you know there is an umbrella uh, umbrella that sort of goes over the top of it which is that you know we have these sort of defining core principles that are sort of our mantras uh, that we all continue to draw from uh, to, to keep us profitable but also there's a methodology white paper is what we call it and it sort of okay. outlines the you know the the basic market structure and price action and order flow concepts that we draw from to actually make trading decisions. And unfortunately, you know, I realize that's what attracts a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They hear about us and they, they go, yeah, I heard this is so a really that's cool the thing. system. That's yeah. the so they go there and they, they get the white paper and they go, okay, now I know how to trade like the DTG guys. And then they leave. It's like, no, no, no. Like you're better off not reading the white paper at all and journaling and interacting with the other members. Cause that's, what's going to make you, a great trader because you're going to realize that all the stuff that you are probably paying attention to and you think is important and, and what you think is your road to success is probably going to be the road to your failure. Yeah. Uh, because not paying that white attention. White paper could just serve as a giant Rorschach of everything else they're doing wrong prior to, like, prior right. to that. It's, it's right. all exactly. in the interaction. Yeah. So, you know, that's just a little bit on the, you know, the history and, and kind of what makes up the community. So, you know, eventually, I wasn't the first one to ever use that word uh, mentorship, but uh, somebody uh, along the way, and, and it, it was fairly recently said, you know, you guys are like mentors. And I was like, Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Never <laughs> been a mentor happen. before. That's pretty neat. So, uh, but I think, you know, the, the last punctuation that, that I want to make is that uh, we, like I said, this was an accident. We happened upon this in a very organic way. We didn't mean to do it. We're glad we did it. We're, we, we're glad it still exists. We, we, we cherish, even covet the community now. We, we, we wouldn't know what to do without it. We, uh, I would argue, get more from it than any other member ever has. I get myself, and I think NJ would probably tell you the same thing. But I, but I do think that more than ever now, and again, I'm going back to this thing that I'm sort of harping on at this point, is that this... Uh, the new age of the internet trader, there's a whole other byproduct of that. And that's that, um, you know, new, newer people don't know this, but back in the day, if you traded, you had a seat on the floor, you trade as a local on the floor, or maybe you were an order filler or, you know, you worked for a clearing firm or whatever, you had some connection to the pits or you worked on a prop desk somewhere, whether that was in New York or Chicago or, you know, regardless of, what you did if you, you know, were an OTC trader for somebody on the street, you know, trading structured yeah. products or whatever the point is, or if you were, you know, a crude oil scalper working for a small, you know, a group of a firm that had 20 traders on a desk somewhere, uh, whatever. I mean, the point being that you were with people all yes. the time. 
and that you were interacting with people. Yeah. And I, uh, I can't, this is something that we can't quantify, but it doesn't really take a rocket scientist to figure out that that's why the community uh, of ours has, has become um, so valuable to us and to these other people that are members. And that's because we kind of took for granted that we're not trading in groups anymore. Like we used to be the old school people, of course I'm talking about. Yeah. And we realized that uh, when you're sort of alone with yourself uh, at your desk, you know, in your office or at your home or wherever you trade, that's, that's probably not the healthiest place to be. You should definitely be interacting with somebody. And, you know, our friend Danny, I think his, uh, his term is don't trade in a closet. And, and I always like that because I agree. I, you know, I think that, you know, whether, whether you're a member of a community like ours or, or uh, whether you just, you know, hook up with a couple trading buddies, you know, two or three guys that you know and you guys are on an IM or you're talking on the phone all day or whatever you're doing, um, I think that interaction is really important. And I think ultimately that's, that's what keeps you grounded. And I think that's directly related to this uh, – you know, this rise of, of technology and everybody scattering and becoming geographically dispersed, which like, why wouldn't you? It's a natural progression, Yeah. but there are pitfalls in it too. And so I think that's, that's really why, why the community has become valuable to a much more diverse group of people than when, when we just started. And I guess that's probably a good segue as we started to see this um, change. I mean, originally just, you know, backing up one click here, we sort of based all of the example material in the forum on the, on the S and P minis, because we found that the vast majority of people were trading that market. We trade that market among others. So, you know, it was sort of like, we can't do everything. So let's sort of ground everything in the S and P and sort of, you know, illustrate that these concepts can apply to any market that you trade in any periodicity for any reason, you know, whatever. But given that it was, you know, the S&P, there's sort of that umbrella of, of the S&P trader that was sort of the nucleus, uh, you know, the short-term intraday S&P traders, the nucleus of, of the, uh, the members of the forum. And then all of a sudden there was a couple currency traders and then there was a crude oil trader or two. And then there were these guys who liked to scalp interest rates. And then there was guys that liked to spread interest rate markets. And, you know, and then there was Dan. Dan, who right. literally... So, right. Right. So, <laughs> so really shows, and that's why I kind of wanted to bring it around full circle and say, you're a DTG member yeah. and you probably wouldn't have been in 2010, nope. not because you wouldn't have got something from it, but you probably never would have heard about it. It was just the fortuitousness of how you and I ended up communicating originally, which is really not important to this discussion, but sort of a happy accident. But now that, that uh, the uh, community has evolved so much, the fact that your trading is so different than everybody else's is not a place at all. I mean, no, it's, it, it's, it's a it very highlights. natural fit. So, uh, so I guess, um, you know, that's, that's probably a good spot to shift gears. And what's also rare about you, which is not true of anybody else in DTG and in, in DTG history, probably because as a group, I tend to hate these people because <laughs> I've really rarely see any of them that, are saying anything that's valuable. Uh, 90% of them, probably more, uh, 99% that I've ever seen, I would be willing to bet my house that they don't even trade, that they've never traded a live account, yeah. that, that they are just trying to sell their little systems or their courses or whatever because they can't find any success on their own. You know, they're not showing any kind of a track record like what you know, that they're for real, that they, you know, whatever. And yeah. uh, so we, we, we're pretty loathsome as a group. Um, and obviously what I'm referring to is that you are uh, two things. You are a, a DTG member and you're also a trading educator. Yeah. Yeah. Like pretty you said, when you, got, when you guys went to that side of the spectrum to, to highlight and to really stress that DTG message, of, you know, get your hyper focus off of getting your interest just right. Boy, you went, really went to the opposite side of the spectrum. With me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, given that, 
given that you're a trading educator is interesting because there's no way that we would tarnish what you've built, what we've built with uh, having anything that, that we thought was questionable on any level. And, and what I liked most about what you were saying was that it, you were really keying on the stuff that, that we know is, is the important stuff, uh, you know, managing your expectations, having realistic ex- expectations, um, deriving the majority of your edge from your risk model, you know, yeah. any, and, any and all analysis at any given point using any given metrics, whether it's, uh, you know, order flow or otherwise, or, or indicators or whatever, um, is an analysis of what the market's doing right now based on what it did do <laughs> prior to now. And it has no bearing on what the market's going to do in the future beyond the next tick. So, you know, if, if you're, if you're an order flow scalper controlling the top of the order book, well, then maybe you can argue your point with me that you have an edge predicting what the next tick's going to be beyond that. Like I pretty much don't want to hear it, um, yeah. on any individual trade. Tell me over a number of trades, you have an edge over time. Uh, okay. Now, now, now we're talking, you know, realism. And so we, you know, we had these sort of mantras that are in our core principles. We don't really need to punctuate them here. People can see them for themselves. But when I was listening to things that you were talking about, uh, really as a voyeur, you had no idea that I was doing it. I was just sort of quietly saying, I listened to one thing you said, and then I think I'll listen to this next thing that he says too. And see, and I, all the while saying to myself, sooner or later, he's going to step on his, you know what? <laughs> and I'm gonna say, see, you know, uh, but he uh, has one just like that. Yeah, but but you were you were engaging, and and uh, you know, to this day, you've never really said anything that that made me think that you're anything but the real deal. And then I subsequently found out that you were. So you were invited to be a member. So what was your first, you know, and then you know, we'll get into sharp trade and and the sort of what you thought the synergy was with sharp trade. But what 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 happened to you, like when you first came to DGG? I'm sure you were probably skeptical also yeah but because you didn't know you didn't know i mean yeah i I didn't know but i'll tell you and and we can get into this later like you said when when we discuss sort of sharp trade and how sharp trade came about but i have literally and it goes back to what you earlier said just been so yearning for interaction i mean i I came from the days I, i was not on any trading floor or on a desk or anything like that but even even if you were calling in orders from home there was more interaction back then you know, with just calling up your broker and shooting the breeze and he transfers, you know, there was more interaction then than there can be now in this age of the internet trader. So I would say when I went into DTG, it was more curiosity of please, dear God, let there be some folks here. <laughs> I can interact with something good to say, right? Yeah. yeah good to say. And aren't going to talk about, you know, well, here's how you have a 50% month every single month. And then I'm going to wander off because now you're just talking stupidity. My reaction, it was really interesting because when I came into it, first of all, there was like three different things that were sort of, I won't say working against me, but in this way where it was like, I was trying to get a grip on what was going on here. And one of them was that what Sharp Trade does is so different on a number of levels. We're not order flow traders. We have sort of more of this, as you said earlier, um, very what most people think of trading when somebody's a retail trader and they get introduced they think well everybody trades the trades the 3 to 15 day periodicity directionally that's all everybody does mm-hmm. um so we're sort of around that space and you know we're, as i said we're equities and so some of it was just getting used to the language <laughs> you know right. a stock guy talking to a futures guy it's like yeah what, definitely you know? some, some different terminology there for sure yeah, so you do what with the orders? <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. I was just trying to get a handle on the on the lingo, but I could easily tell this isn't this was not an area, and it punctuates what you were saying earlier. I could instantly tell that DTG was not an area where everybody goes and sits and talks about their entrances or this is where I got in the trade. It was more like walking onto a virtual trade desk. Yeah, I think that's an accurate uh, description. Because that's- because when you're on an actual trade desk. If some guy's getting like, you know, in that particular month, everybody gets them, everybody has them. In that particular month, the market is just literally punching him right in the solar plexus and the guy can't breathe. There's no hiding that on a, on a virtual trade desk, like every, or on a trade desk, I should say. Everybody knows it. (laughs) Like, yeah, poor Bob's over there. It's very, every, uh, triumphs and defeats are very public at DTG. Yeah. And it was the same thing. So it wasn't like 
Because some people may hear that message and they think, well, you know, obviously we all get together and that's what we talk about, what's going on in the market right now. And it's like, no, DTG is not that. It's literally like walking onto a virtual trade desk. Every All the reality that you get in a trade desk, you would get here. And then I read. The, I it's sort of that wild, wild world of uh, sports commercial. You know, the agony defeat when the the old. Yeah. I'm, I'm showing my age here, but you remember the skier, the the skier, skier. wiping out on the slope. You're the thinking yourself, so, when he lands, he's going to break 82 bones. Yeah. <laughs> the agony yeah. of defeat. ABC Wild World of Sports. Go ahead. Yeah, but yeah, but it's just like, when is it going to end? You know, and yeah. and that's one thing I really love about DTG, and this is just the first aspect, is. Guys will pipe up and say, God in heaven, when is this going to end? (laughs) Like the skier going down the hill, you know, um, a particular string of losses or whatever it is or over trading or ever doing everything correct. But it's just it's not the time, you know, at that particular time for the trade to to work out profitably, whatever it is. It was just reality. And then the second thing I would say is I read the white paper. So I'm, I'm seeing this environment and I'm, I'm reading some, I'm looking at some of the, the materials on all of the resource materials that are, that are there. And I'm saying, yeah, this is, this is reality by God. I can interact with these folks on a rational basis. And then I read the white paper. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, and what was your, you know, as somebody who isn't a price action and order flow or volume based trader, what was your reaction to the white paper initially? Well, that, w- that was what was interesting is because I read it, and folks may not know this, and I don't need to get into the full story here, but uh, I started in 96 trading. As I said, not in Chicago, not in the pits, not anywhere near them, just phoning in orders. I was the guy that, you know. <laughs> the low-hanging uh, fruit. Yeah, I was the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yum, yum, retail snacks. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I interacted with all of those guys. I talked with them. I, I tried desperately to get to know them because I understood back at that time that I'm not at the market. I operated with that information in hand. Like, the market's ongoing, you know? And... I know that the bid and the offer and the mark is ongoing and I can't see it. And I, I, I didn't look to why I tell people this all the time. I didn't look and whine, whine and blame anybody because in all honesty, it's my belief. And I will, I will, you know, pound my fist on the table constantly about this is that if you were in the pits, you were the HFT of your day. I mean, sure. sure. Yeah, guys, you, pay to be, you pay to be close to the market. Like You pay to be that, close to the market. Uh, it's I, no different. So that's not really the main point. My point is that I got to know the process. I was like, okay, so that's how those guys trade. And I have to know how those guys trade. So I need to know where I fit. So you'd say probably that that's, I forget what your wording was. Well, my wording was, so I read the white paper. So I was just trying to explain to folks that, yes, I understood that form of trading. No, I was not necessarily, you know, a pit trader, but I understood that form of trading. So I read through the white paper and I just thought I got to the end of it and I had to go back and read it a couple of times because there's just linguistic differences between futures traders and order flow and, and equities guys. And then I just, I think I just sent you a message and it was just very simple. It was like, oh, you've just digitized floor trading basically. That's yeah. all you've done. Th- th- this yeah. is ingenious. And I yeah, you were the first guy that ever say that, and and uh, I really I've thought about that a lot because what's interesting is that when I wrote the white paper, it it was not my intention to do. You know, it's just you're a you're a, a product of your the time that you come from and your experience yeah. in in trading and all that. And I'm kind of an old school guy, so but yeah, you know, and I, I remember saying to you, I think I think that's accurate because if you were a a local uh, market maker, you know, trading futures in, in, in the pits, you know, in the seventies, eighties, nineties, whatever, that same kind of information that's in the white paper is exactly what was important to you. The difference is, is that it, it rather than a bunch of numbers or very few numbers that you're, you know, you're seeing on a screen, there was a very human element to it, obviously, but the same information was, important and that's that um you know 
how many are on the right side, how many are on yes. the wrong side, who's, who's about on to get the punched right in side, the and who's yeah. on the wrong side, and what yes. will their likely actions be when they realize that they're wrong, and so on, you know, and, and who's going to change the market, who's big enough to change the market, what's the power of size in this situation, and so on and so forth. So while unintentional, I think your description is, is pretty accurate. I think yeah. that's, yeah. Yeah, it's it's absolutely it just While overgeneralized, like, uh, you know, let me punch. Yeah, overgeneralized. Yeah, it's exactly. to make it simple for folks that may be listening to this that aren't familiar with order flow trading. It was like, actually, this is almost, I think, a little bit better <laughs> than floor trading. Floor trading had its advantages, but. Well, I wouldn't say that because you lose the human element, of course. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You lose the human element. You, you miss. But certainly bit. far more uh, information and a way easier way to categorize it. Yes. Uh, you know, try, try, remember, you know, that's what's so great about these tools. And I don't want to backtrack and, you know, lose any ground that we've gained here. But again, this is one of the other byproducts of, of this, uh, you know, this technology revolution that we've had, you know, au contraire that, uh, that, that the, you know, the big five, as we call them, the big five HFT firms are not the only ones to benefit. I mean, there are so many wonderful, efficient ways to categorize what would really be a bear uh, of, you know, disorganized data, even yes. a few years ago. And now it's uh, very easy to categorize that data and, and place it in very real and readable uh, categories that you yeah. can, that you can sort of uh, distill into these concepts of, you know, who's trapped, who's not, what's, you know, is there a lot of trading here? Is there a little blah, blah, blah. Right. So, exactly. um, you know, we're not trying to give a crash course on what's important to order flow traders or tape traders or, or whatever, but, uh, but yeah, so I think that's, uh, that's the way that you kind of broke that down is, is would probably be a fair, uh, you know, it, if somebody wanted to uh, understand the market, it's probably better to say for somebody who wanted to understand how a market works at the yes. individual auction level, the white paper probably does a pretty good job at, at showing those concepts. Yes. And this has not changed. This is the way a market works. And, you know, yeah. it was funny because when I read the white paper, the thought I had, and we all know the very famous movie out there about, you know, floor trading and, and uh, guys that would having, were having a very, very difficult time making the transition from the floor to electronic trading. Right. And I thought of them, and we all know the movie, and we all know, you know the objections that, that some of those, not everybody, but some, many of them made. And I thought, but it's right here. I'm yeah. reading the white paper, and I'm thinking they had, a, it's just, I don't, I don't want to say humorous like I'm laughing at anybody, but I just, I did find it a little bit sardonic or, or, or humorous that there were all of these objections that once it's on the electronic, it's no longer the same market. Everything's changed. It's not the honesty of the market that it used to be in the pits. And I'm reading the white paper and I'm like, no, I, I want to hold this up and wave it in front of people. And it's like, nothing has changed. Yeah, it is. This, this is well, it. Of course, that what you're talking about is definitely a, 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 a Darwinian problem. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It's a knuckle, <laughs> knuckle dragging. Yes. <laughs> no, uh, I could punch but, somebody uh, before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but no, but I get it on one level. I mean, losing that human element was huge. And oh, you, absolutely. Know, you, you know what you know if you do something for 20 years. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. And like, I yes. get that. But, but, uh, but yeah, you know, the, the fundamentals of the auction haven't changed. And they don't have anything to do with the S&P or the 10-year or or whatever, you know, anything that trades, you know, back and forth between hum two human beings anywhere in the world every day, whether it's a can of Coke at the convenience store that you just stopped at or buying your gasoline or whatever is an auction. So, you know, yeah. um, down supply to even, and demand, you know, yeah, down to even illiquid OTC mark. Oh, those are, no, they're not. No, they're not. Yeah. Like you said, can of pop, a house, a car, you know, there's a very famous movie out, you know, now it's on Netflix and everything about OCT or OTC derivatives. Or whether it's Medtronic or whether it's the E-mini, it functions the same way. Right. It's that auction nature of the market. It's an auction. Yeah, markets are the same. Yeah. So that's cool. So you got – so despite the fact that you were um, definitely not that kind of trader, it not sort of piqued your interest a little bit. And and what else was it? I mean, the um, obviously you were um, – immediately very active in the community and what was it well it is me it is me well, we're talking about <laughs> you're, you're not you're, you're nobody would accuse you of uh, of just you know that dan he's a great guy but he just doesn't say much yeah he doesn't say uh, much. <laughs> <laughs> about this about the same as they'd accuse me of that anyway 
you know, I was just glad because I, you know, I used to set the record for the longest post in the forum, but now I got a, I've got a challenger, you know, to that. Yes. So when you came in, so that was good. Coming in quickly. Yeah. So, so you, but you took to it right away. I mean, you found that even though you were trading very differently than most of the members, you, um, you integrated really well and people really were interested in, in, in what you're talking about. And of course we know what the, the reason for that was is because that you're applying the same concepts that matter to any trader, right? Because yes. it wasn't that, Oh, my moving average is crossing. So therefore, you know, this is going to make or break me and why I'm uh, winning the trade, even though that no. might be one of the ways that you segmented the market into a trade event, you know, no, nobody was, uh, thinking that that's what you were talking about. So, uh, yeah. you know, obviously our membership was already pretty savvy to, you know, what they should be listening to, what you were talking about. And uh, you just sort of proved that periodicity and, you know, you got your edge from the risk model, you're a grinder. A total uh, grinder, you know, especially, you yeah. Pay much attention to the outcome of any one trade. Um, and, every, you know, I kind of, remember collectively trade. watching the membership go, hmm, this guy's in trades for days at a time. And yeah. yet He's bringing that his, up again? He's still in yeah. that thing? <laughs> and yet his series of you know trade events over the course of a month looks just like mine. And the risk metrics apply. So it was definitely a light bulb for some members to see that, you know, um, even in their longer term trading, you know, all, all the stuff that we sort of, beat like a drum over and over again is all that really matters. And it, and, and, and it goes back thing. to something you said earlier, because there was also a benefit to myself because that was the third sort of thing I noticed when I came into DTG is, you know, you had said, you know, come in, just pick one of the process. I have many processes and make it, make it a little different. Right. And, uh, and talk about it. And so I, I started talking about the process and there was questions and then there were these questions. I, ha I didn't even realize this. And I know I said this on the forums, but I'm going to say it again here. I didn't even realize I was getting inside my own head because I was, you know, being asked questions. And my first reaction is, well, what do you mean? Why am I doing that? I mean, look at the chart and just, it's right there. It's obvious. Yeah. Yeah. It's obvious. That's, that's why I'm like, why are you asking me this? And it, and it after about two weeks, it was like, I realized I was getting in my own head and there was such a benefit to myself because as you trade for a long period of time, and yes, we've already said you can get inside your own mind and you're just alone in front of your charts, but there are things you learn as a trader and as a grinder that become just automatic information, sort of like, you know, blinking or breathing or something. But if you're not discussing those concepts with others in a, like any work environment, probably carpenters are the same way and guys that work on cars, they're interacting with other people in their field. Those things that you think are automatic and I will never change and I'll always remember that, when you're alone, you, it starts to slip a little bit. Yeah, you know? Sure. Uh, you, and, you're, you're, you're your own worst enemy. I mean, if you're a absolutely. trader, you're with your thoughts and that goes for all of us. I mean, Yes, and, and uh, you know, I've heard another trader refer to it this way. He's a uh, equities guy, equities uh, day trader. And he's always mentioned, you know, it's always that moment where you say, I wonder what happens if I do this. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you've been in your head too long. You know, another thing too, that I think is good, was a good sort of uh, side benefit of you be, being a member and interacting with people was that I think it was good for people to, to see from a, from another angle that um, somebody else who'd been around a long time. I mean, you know that, Yes. you know, our, it's, it's an interesting paradox and this is just, you know, the speed of information, speed of learning, you know, back to this age of the internet trader, everything's fat. I mean, people can become really astute as traders way faster than they could. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my I mean, goodness. there's, it's, it's, it's interesting because there's almost more to learn than there ever was, but yet, um, there's so much information out there, uh, you know, it's like, and you can get it in 140 characters, you know, uh, yeah. I, I'm not sure how healthy any of it is, but that's a whole other uh, tangent that we don't need to go down. But the point I'm trying to make is that I would say, I mean, if you, you know, you put a light on my head and said, describe the typical DTG member, I would be most inclined to say that they're pretty, a pretty experienced lot. 
Yes. Um, they have been around the block. They, you know, not all of them, but some of them have done the thing where they bought the courses and the eBooks and all this and the, you know, method the red hunted light, the green greatest light. red light, green light and failed and have come out the other side and gone, you know, and sort of DTG is kind of like the last stop of like, you know, this is, this is it. I mean, hmm. if you can't make it here, you're not going to make it because we're telling you before you ever walk in the door, the answer is not here. I don't have the secret sauce. I'm not, I may be successful, but I'm here to tell you there is no magic. Like, here it is. I got, here's the carrot in front of you. Just come pay me for it. You know, I mean, it doesn't yeah. work that way. Nope. And I think, I think it was good to have, so, I mean, NJ and I are the founders of the forum. Yeah. So, and in a way, people hold this in a certain light just because we happen to be the first two guys there. We don't think of ourselves any different than any other members, but um, because we're the founders, people tend to say, well, yeah, but they can, you know, it's almost like we always have that teacher role on us, even though oh, we're not, yes. you know what I'm saying? We're not selling. Yeah. So, so it was nice to, to have somebody who'd been around a long time and, you know, trading a long time sort of corroborate what I'm saying about it doesn't get any easier. Yes. Like how, you know, I can say it till I'm blue in the face and it's almost like people, don't, it's like, oh, Rob, you're just telling us that so we don't feel so bad about something. Yeah. Or, it's you know, easy for him to say that. Yeah, he says he loses, but he doesn't. I see his calls in the room and the guy's never wrong, blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah. I hear the comments, I hear the chatter. And you, to a certain extent, you can't stop the kind of, you know, these guys are the gurus thing, yes. you know, because people are so conditioned for that, to look for you know, that. because yeah, that's look the for guru it. thing. It's out there. Who's the guru? How do, where's yeah. the guru site? Let me find the guru. So I think it's cool to hear them say, you know, again, somebody coming from a totally different perspective, like I, 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 I might, I'm going to trade for eight seconds and I'm the guy saying every single time I pull the trigger, I'm never sure about it. I think it sucks. I hate it. I'm chew, you know, I'm yeah. screaming, I'm throwing stuff, doing everything that everybody else does. Right. And then, you're, 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 you might be to trade for 18 days. He said, you're yeah. still, you're waking up at night and cold sweat, you know, doing the, oh, yeah. it never stops. And I thought, nope. I think it's cool. The contrast is saying, you know, here's a guy who's, you know, who's, you know, been around a long time also. And he's saying the same thing and he doesn't trade like this at all. So like they start to get the message, like yes, it's embrace the suck. Like that's what trading is. And you will be defined and your account size will be defined by your ability to navigate that environment and not beat it into submission. Yes. Know, uh, and, and say, well, you know, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to study and be become better as, as, as a trader in order to get to the other side where it doesn't suck anymore. And I always know how to make the right decision. Yeah. And, and in which know, case, we're, if we're, telling, get to- we're telling them coming right in the door you yes. know, that you will not find that here. There is yeah. not, do not be you know, like, just turn, go back, you know, like the Halloween, you know, the haunted house, you know, do, don't, don't enter, you know, yeah. because it's, it's, so that's good. I mean, and I think that that was a good byproduct of having somebody who had both been around a long time, but also doesn't trade anything like the majority of the members, you know, exactly. If you ever are in a position and, and, and again, we repeat those same things, but if you ever are in a position and you sleep through the night, you've got a, I don't know, average trade is 12 days or something like that. Uh, you're not risking enough. You need right. to be wake. Oh, I, I heard a trader say that one time. I thought it beautiful. You need to be waking up. If you're in that periodicity at least once or twice a night. Yeah. Period. <laughs> cause, cause the name of this game is risk, you know? Right. And and it's something that we at Sharp Traded had told people right up front. You know, I had this entry that I had written, trading blasphemy. And it was basically, yeah, I, I go out and I see the same thing. And it's all of this garbage about, you know, I can finally make it to that place where I'm a success and I don't have those, you know, reactions anymore. And it's always beautiful and wonderful. And I turn away from the – and it, I, in the article I said, you know, that's what's out there. And you can call – in three months you can got, call guys that are being interviewed. They've been slinging – sling it in the markets for 40 years. Uh, you can call them idiots and you'll be quitting your job. And we told them, no, you won't. That will not happen. Right. It's not going to happen. So let me commit to blasphemy. You're not going to make living off a $25,000 account. No, you will never make the living off the $25,000 account. If you can grind, here's how you get to the you know, first 800000 and then yeah. afterwards to where you're, yes, or whatever career path you want to take, you know, here's how you get there. But don't come here. And, magic and that's something of, magic of compound interest. 
Yes, but don't come here and think these are finally the guys that are going to tell me how I can take this $25,000 account, become an immediate success, and I'm out of my nine to five job in three months. Not going to happen. Yeah. Just not. <laughs> yeah. Just stopping people from destroying themselves is probably the main function of, yeah. of the community. You know, um, that's. It's probably good. So, so what? So, tell me about Sharp Trade, or you know, what's, yeah. how did that come about? And what's interesting, and I think you had mentioned it before, and and again, it's not important to get into the entire story of how you and I connected, but um, I know somebody had sort of pointed you my way, mm-hmm. and and I think your reaction, like you had said earlier, was, "Oh God, one of these guys." <laughs> yeah, especially because the guy that originally pointed me to you was wasn't a trader yes he wasn't a a, 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 not only was he uh not a market professional (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know or a colleague of mine or anything like that from that side of the business but he wasn't even an aspiring trader really so yes i was like i didn't really have much uh many high hopes for me many high (laughs) hopes for his recommendation of this great guy that i should check out on trade on the internet no less yeah no less talking about what you need to learn for trading But uh, as I was saying before, you know, just to sort of make it brief, I've always I've always been wanting to interact with other real traders because, you know, when I started really trading well, we're going back to, you know, it it took a while because there wasn't the ease of information that there is now and the plethora of information. I will argue as a side point, we live in the golden age of being an, you know, a retail trader. Well, it has its that. own dangers, but oh my goodness, like you said before, the information. But in 2006, I'm starting to notice like I don't need to call up my broker. And if it's a slow afternoon, I can maybe chat with them. Maybe I can chat with one of the guys on the desk. Maybe they won't mind. Yeah, there is no desk anymore. Yeah, it's going away. And so I was, I just basically started establishing some sort of presence on the net. And as we were saying before, for anything, more than anything else, for my own benefit, it's like, God, I feel like I'm starving. I need to interact with somebody. Mm -hmm. And so I I did a few things on my own. You know, I I blogged, which which was a great experience because, again, I was having to detail my thoughts, right? But it was just me. It was just me. And then um, I did something else on my own where I thought, okay, let let me establish some sort of internet thing here. And I need to come up with a name for it. So I'm going to call it no nonsense trading and I'm going to beat on all of those lessons that we talked about before. And I think that's when you and I sort of, uh, interacted and then sharp trade LLC. Well, well, I guess that really came about because with no nonsense trading, I just, uh, over a period of time, it was just like, I just did more and more and more and more. And it was all on my shoulder. It was, it was only me. I was doing all of it. And that includes everything that, tr- first of all, just the trading and the investing and then the, the, uh, you know, cause you got to do that, right. <laughs> then, uh, you know, just the content and the taxes and the answering email and the accounting, it just got to be too much. And so Sharp Trade LLC, it was like, you know, I, I can't do everything on my own. Anymore. I just can't. And so we formed Sharp Trade LLC sort of in a very, very specific way uh, in that there's sort of a back end of the house and front end of the house. You know, obviously back end is sort of what we do and then w- what, you know, the front end being what people see. So, you know, you, you look towards like, the, you know, the back end of the house, right? Myself. The other managing members, we trade, you know, the, just the close stake of the firm as, as we have come up with our mandate and the way that money is to be traded. But again, it's trying to reach out to new retail traders. And like you said, DTG was more, these are folks who have been around the block and have really been hammering it out to figure out, okay. And, and so they've, they've picked up a lot of information along the way. Right. When we started, well, so you're, sharp, you're, getting, you're getting the green ones, basically. Yes, exactly. Sharp trade. We know people are going to perform those Google searches. You can't rewind the clock. We live in the internet age. We do live in the age of the internet trader, and you can't stop that. So I knew absolutely new folks were going to Google. How do I trade profitably? How do I make a living trading? How do I, you know, how do I start trading? And so that's sort of who specifically we reach out to. And, you know, and it's more equities, right? As you were saying before, it's not order flow. It's not... Um, it's not futures. I mean, yes, I've traded futures. It's how I got my start, but nothing as extensive as you guys. And so, you know, it's more equities based stocks, ETFs, 
that sort of thing, different periodicities, and reaching out to those folks who are new. Because I, I, would, I was always looking to interact without realizing, you know, not everybody has the same experience level. And I kept on noticing, like, there were basic lessons that I had learned that new folks aren't getting. I mean, really basic, what I would consider basic stuff. And so we decided, you know what, that, that is who, exactly who we're going to reach out to. And yes, it, we are going to reach out, like you said, it's sort of if you want to look at the sharp trade model of people that are trying to swing trade directionally, three days to 15 days, what everybody thinks is the only way to trade, and it's only one of many. We're going to reach out to those, and it's going to be in stocks. But we're going to show them even different periodicities, right? Like, so I have my valuation book. And I talk about that all the time or, you know, valuation equities here is how I get the risk adjusted metrics. But at the same time, that's just the framework by which we are hammering on the same lessons. You know, I'll write daily articles or something, but I'm always find, trying to find a way to hammer on that anti, I, I'm trying to be the anti red light, green light guy. No, your entrance is not going to make you or break you as a trader. Uh, no, your specific technical tool setup, no one cares. Right. No one cares what it is. <laughs> I remember I went through this period where I was trading really well, and uh, they're like, you know, everybody was focusing on the technical tools I was l- using on the chart, and I said, really? You know what? I'm going to change them because it doesn't matter. Right. I'm going to use the same risk overlay. I'm going to be risk advantage. I'm going to operate in the same periodicity. I'm looking for the same type of entrance. But that stupid squiggly line on a chart, here, I'm going to use one EMA. I am literally going to trade off of just one EMA. Right. And it was the exact same thing. But I was yeah. still trying to hammer home those, those ideals of, yes, I will let you look at maybe three processes that I do. But everybody's got to – I think this was uh, your guys' terminology. Um, you have to turn yourself into a trader. Oh, nobody can oh, nobody do it for you. Yeah, that's for sure. Like you have to like not look at what I'm doing. Oh, Dan did that. Let me get out my – piece of paper and write it down and do the exact same thing. I'm just, I'm trying to demonstrate the grinding process. So mm-hmm. take whatever you're going to use, use it and grind it out for yourself and journal it and interact. And it's, it's, it's fascinating to me because on one side of the coin, DTG and sharp trade are so wildly different in almost every respect. And you flip the other side coin of the coin over and it's all the same thing. Right. You know, and I, I, uh, I thought that uh, just, you know, it's semantics, but like, for example, you're talking about, um, you know, the, the typical DTG trader being, uh, you, know, a sh- you know, very short term sort of price action order flow focused trader. A lot of, you know, them, like anybody, you know, they, they have longer term investment portfolios, you know, they manage... Yes. Their, IRA, their own IRA account, or like, hopefully they do. They don't want some, some idiot to do it for them. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, whatever. Or, or just, yeah. you know, they've got a, you know, they like to, you know, maintain a book of equities or maybe they're valuation investors or whatever. It's good to know that people who were seeking that kind of information that were, that were our members could learn it from somebody who was doing it and not doing it in the context of this stuff that we're trying to stay away from. You know, um, yes. keeping yes. in the current perspective, because ask me about valuation. I know as much about valuation investing as I know about women's cosmetics. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously, it's just not yeah. a thing. But if if I wanted to get into it, you know, my probably my hardest sort of initial criteria would be trying to decide whether anybody that was given the information was an idiot or not. You know, I mean, yes. that, and unfortunately, that's the case. So you know, kind of having somebody who's already demonstrating through other stuff that they're not, uh, you know, applying the wrong ideals to their, uh, to any idea about any type of trading, you know, whether it's, yes. you know, cause it starts to get a little specialized. I mean, uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I mean, not, not people can't just sort of waltz, you know, into work you know, tomorrow and start selling premium, for example, until they, yes. you know, they got to have an idea what they're doing and who do you learn that from? You know, you know, everybody can't be the sort of teacher to, you know, I can, 
you know, wax uh, philosophical about the order flow concepts in my sleep. Like, you know, so it's, 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 um, my, my point with that is that you can't have a community necessarily like a DTG or whatever, where you talk about everything in oh, astounding just, detail. There just isn't enough time of the day or enough space or, you know, at some point you, you got to focus it, you know? Yeah. And I think it's cool that, you know, you're not everything, you know, no. you focused on a certain range of period this season, a, a few strategies and you leave it there, you know? Yes. And I, and I think Cause you know, that's a whole other trap. Because otherwise it just becomes overwhelming for people, you know, it's too yeah. much. Yeah. And that's a whole other trap. And, and I, you know, yeah, I, I trade like more processes and things that, you know, we demonstrate three and there's a whole aspect of having three and that, that we get into, but you know, it, and it sort of highlights something you said earlier, interacting with other traders in this age of the internet trader is so important because you never graduate from the failings. Right. You know, there's always a side of me that's like, oh my God, look at that over there. That looks like the biggest, funnest money playground in the universe. I'd love to go look at all the money, you know, and, and there's just so many different little playgrounds and so many different processes that to this day, I still have to pull myself back. And it's like, yeah, I may trade more, but I, I can't do anything else. This is what you really need to focus on. Yeah. And, and we do do, like I said, valuations. And, and, I, and you had taken a look at, at what we were doing on valuations. And it's funny because as soon as you made a comment, I was like, see, now there's somebody that understands trading because I'll go for I, what I'm aiming for is a certain return, lower my drawdown as much as possible. Here's how I do it. But here's where I set the knobs. And one of the comments you had made, it was like, oh man, you know, my, you know, for yourself, where you set the risk knob for you personally, is like, oh, I've just cranked that knob way up. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, you know. And it's not, it's not necessarily to, to highlight. What's the worth doing is worth doing bigger. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not necessarily to highlight your risk profile or, or, or how you set the knob, but here's the process. Yes. But, and these are the percentages I use, but we constantly tell people, these are the percentages I use. If you wanted to crank the knob up, crank the knob up, you know, that's, that's to each individual. Yeah. But you know, this, this is the select way we approach it. And yeah. just trying to get that message out there, like stop with the, your, your trade got manipulated against you because somebody else had a better green light, red light than you got. Yeah. No. <laughs> and, and, a, and a joystick. And, and a joystick, yes. Controlling yeah. the whole world from, from uh, discrete government controlled locations. And that's <laughs> <laughs> that's <not> <laughs> no, it, it really is when you boil it all down, it doesn't matter if it's valuation investing or you're in a futures trade for eight seconds. It's all the same thing. Everybody is trying to punch everybody else in the face. Yeah. It's all the same thing. And, and it's funny to me because as a valuation guy in equities, you know, they have all these interviews with, you know, let's talk Warren Buffett, right? And they'll always ask him, so how do you approach investing, Warren? Like, what's the big secret system? He has literally, if you go back and look at every interview, that man has given the exact same answer for probably 50 years. <laughs> Every time he's interviewed, all he does is he's got a process, a segment. It's basically things where other people feel there's distrust. He's willing to step in front of it and say, I'm willing to take a measured risk because of this particular overlay. It's all the same thing. And I think Pete, that's the message people need to hear. Listen, you need to surround yourself, not even necessarily sharp trade or DTG, but you need to surround yourself with people that preach that message. Yeah, definitely a synergy there for sure. Yeah, yeah, and then that's a whole synergy between I think Sharp Trade and Discovery Trading Group. So that that's the, I think more than anything else, you know, and even putting this together when when we were talking about it, that's what we wanted. It's like people need to hear that message. You know, yes, you get Rob and Dan together. We really could go for three hours. And I promise we won't. <laughs> and we really, really could. But that's the message that we think Discovery Trading Group, Sharp Trade needs to hear. I agree. 